about the church of God doctrine. Our denomination is talking about the churches of God. This is a church of God, which means it's a church that worships God. It doesn't make any difference whether you're Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, whatever. As long as you put God first and love God, you're a church of God. For your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. You see, Paul knew even then. He's telling them to stay at fast, stay at, be steadfast. Listen to this. Which is a manifest token of the righteousness judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Paul says, I am so thankful that this congregation at Thessalonica is so strong in the word of God that your faith is growing daily. I'm so glad that you are able to stand your steadfastness in times of persecution and tribulation. Now, we've talked about this many times at Crossroads. Many of you have been persecuted because of your faith in God. You've been persecuted and you've gone through tribulations and trials because you come to Crossroads. People have talked about me and put me down. They've called me everything under the sun. And a lot of you joining my television don't know that. But I'm telling you right now, I've been called about everything that you can be called. But God is still pumping the gospel out of this place. Why? Because I'm not going to give you a chapter. I'm not going to tell you a verse of the Bible and not give you book, chapter, and verse of it. I'm not going to quote something and not tell you where to find it in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. I'm telling you right now that you've got to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It'll make you free and you'll be free indeed when you know the Word of God. And I keep continually telling this congregation and telling everybody I'm talking to and telling everybody by television that you've got to study the Word. You've got to get grounded in a church that believes in the power of Almighty God, believes in the gifts of the Spirit, believes that God is still on the throne, that He's not dead, that He has power over everything. It, in the Bible it says, let every subject, let every soul be subject unto the powers. Let every one of us be subject to the powers. In Bible, in, in Romans 13, I believe it is, He said, for there are no powers other than those that are ordained by God. And when do you get that power? Listen to me, preachers. Congregation, listen to me. Read Acts 1.8. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall receive power. But there's so many preachers today preaching the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for yesterday. Congregation, we had tongues and interpretation come in here a while ago. And if you'll study your Bible in 1 Corinthians, I believe it is chapter 14. It tells you there that the gifts of the Spirit, the speaking of tongues and interpretation is for the non-believer. It's for those that don't believe. When you hear somebody bring forth a language that you have no earthly idea what dialect it is, because there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of different dialects. Just in the Indian Reservation right here in the United States, there's thousands of different dialects. But when you hear someone bring forth tongues and then someone else interpret the bible clearly tells you not to forbid forbid not for it to come forward some of you pastors run people off they go to speaking in tongues let me tell you something you're going against god's word because i'll show your congregation exactly where the bible in the bible it says forbid it not and it says it's for the non-believers not for the believers if you're a believer in here this morning you hear tongues interpretation you know you know better but it's for the ones who don't believe the ones who don't know the Word of God, the ones who have never studied the Bible because they ain't got time to study the Bible. I'm telling you today that God has put us here to talk to the millions of people that are too lazy or too sorry or too busy to pick up their Bibles and study it. It's one thing to pick up a Bible in the morning and read a verse and go on out the door. Thank God for you, those of you that do that. But it's another thing to pick up that Bible and go to studying. I'm talking about running references. I'm talking about rabbit hunting. You get after a rabbit, and you know that rabbit didn't run that just one trail. He'll go four or five different ways dodging. He'll be running every which way. You can't run straight and catch a rabbit. He'll go right. He'll go left. But the thing about it is where you jump him if you'll stand still. I don't care if he runs for two hours. He'll come right back to where you jumped him. That's the smartness of a hunter. You stand right still, and that animal that you jumped will run all over the county. 
But he'll, I don't care if dogs are chasing him, what, he'll come right back to where you jumped him. And if you'll stand still, you'll get him. And that's the same way it is with the Bible. You may run all the way through the Scriptures and everything. God may take you all over the Bible. But if you'll always remember and you'll stay right where you're at, he'll bring you right back to where you started. He'll bring it right back to your remembrance, what you've read, what you've studied. But you studied the Bible. He says, search the Scriptures. And you see, you hear it in here every Sunday, every week. You continually hear it. But do you realize that there's thousands of people watching today that wasn't watching last Sunday? And they've not heard it. This ministry is to tell them your teaching comes on Sunday nights, Tuesday nights. Your teaching comes after the cameras are turned off. We're going to keep on having church. We've already had church for an hour this morning or a couple hours. I don't know. We started about 10. I guess it's already after 12 now. But anyway, we are going to get through the Word of God, but God wants us to tell the world. He says, Be ye witnesses unto me in Judea, in Samaria, and to Ju- in, uh, in Jerusalem, and to the uttermost parts of the world. I said that backwards. But anyway, we're to be witnesses. And if you'll read Acts chapter 7 and 8 and 9, Acts chapter 1, excuse me, verses 7, 8, and 9, you'll find that what I'm saying is true. Be ye witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Because you're going to receive some power. Why does the church not have the power today? Why doesn't Congress have the power? Why don't the people in Washington have the power? Because they don't have the Holy Ghost. If, if God's dealing with your heart, I've got to say a prayer real quickly. I'm running out of time. Bow your head with me. Father God, I come before you today. I am a sinner. I'm asking you, Father, to forgive my sins. Place them under the blood of Jesus, for I believe in my heart, and I'm confessing with, confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead. This moment, I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart to be my Savior, to be Lord of my life. And I'm asking you, Father, to seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. There's a toll-free number on the screen. Dial that number. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to send you some free literature. Pray for us always and support us whenever you can. Remember, Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you. Hi, I want to share with you a special offer we have this week. It's called Our Family Decree, and it's absolutely free. There's a toll-free number on the screen, and I ask you to dial that number right now and tell them you want the family decree. It's absolutely free. We pay the postage, we pay the shipping, we pay everything. It's beautiful, and you need to have it in your home to hang on your wall, and it's a decree. It just lets the devil know that you and your household are going to serve God for the rest of your lives. Now, you don't get the frame, but you do get it. It's on parchment paper. You'll have to go out and buy your own frame. Now, we'll ship you the decree absolutely free. Call the number on the screen right now, but it it just declares, it says, It is written, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. It's got Scripture all the way through it, and it's absolutely free. Dial the number right now and tell us that you want this decree for your house and let the devil know you mean business. I ask you to continue. Pray for for this ministry. Support us when you can. God bless you.